Greetings. How good uh, for us to be here tonight for our evening prayer. Uh, today, as you are full aware, is Thursday, February 18th, 2021. Um, I am thinking for next week, which we will be in in full-fledged uh, season of Lent uh, after the first Sunday in Lent, um, that I may be looking into a, a varied uh, morning and evening prayer, um, mostly because it's a specific season. So I like to mix things up a little bit uh, to learn uh, through different resources and for you to kind of tune in to these uh, moments and to be not quite sure what uh, what will be happening. Um, so we will see. But, but tonight, uh, what is before us is something that is familiar. And I trust that some of the consistent prayers that we have been sharing over a very long time uh, have become uh, much more familiar to you. You've maybe had some of them memorized, and that's a, a pretty wonderful thing to draw on at all different times. Um, we have our two candles in the cross, uh, which just feels just perfect and right. I know evening prayer in particular has been very meaningful to so many of you, and uh, you're able to, to watch it when it best fits your schedule, perhaps before bed or a little bit after dinner. Uh, I wanted to point out uh, to you in our uh, second lesson today from 1 John, this is not the Gospel of John, but the letter of John, uh, maybe not as familiar to some of you. But I did want to uh, raise, uh, raise up in verse 8, where I'm going to be reading in verse 9. I'm going to read these two sentences. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now that should be extremely familiar to all of us, as that is a part of our worship service on Sunday mornings. Um, and uh, it is during the confession and forgiveness. And, um, you know, it, it's just always nice to know where parts of our liturgy, that they are scriptural, that they're coming from uh, biblical passages. And so now, if you did not know that before, uh, our confession and forgiveness when we're using the standard rite comes from 1 John um, chapter 1, verses 8 through 9. So I just wanted to raise that off. I find uh, this time is a way to not just be spiritually filled up, but spiritually filled up by learning and by growing, being educated about what it is that we're doing and why we're doing it. And that's always been very special to me. Um, I think those are all the announcements uh, that we have. Um, but thank you again for participating in our evening prayer. And thank you for the faithfulness to this ministry. We begin our prayer. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. O oh, gracious light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O oh, Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now as we come to the setting of the sun, and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praise, O oh God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O oh, Son of God, O oh, giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. Psalm 25, verses 1 through 9. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. My God, I put my trust in you. Let me not be humiliated, nor let my enemies triumph over me. Let none who look to you be put to shame. Let the treacherous be disappointed in their schemes. Show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. In you have I trusted all the day long. Remember, O Lord, your compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions. Remember me according to your love 
and for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Gracious and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he teaches sinners in his way. He guides the humble in doing right and teaches his way to the lowly. All the paths of the Lord are love and faithfulness to those who keep his covenant and his testimonies. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our first reading tonight comes from Daniel chapter 9, verses 1 through 14. In the first year of Darius, son of Ahasuerus, by birth of Mede, who became king over the realm of the Chaldeans, in the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, perceived in the books the number of years that, according to the word of the Lord to the prophet Jeremiah, must be fulfilled for the devastation of Jerusalem, namely, seventy years. Then I turned to the Lord, God, to seek an answer by prayer and supplication with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. I prayed to the Lord my God and made confession, saying, Ah, Lord, great and awesome God, keeping covenant and steadfast love with those who love you and keep your commandments. We have sinned and done wrong, acted wickedly and rebelled, turning aside from your commandments and ordinances. We have not listened to your servants, the prophets, who spoke in your name to our kings, our princes, and our ancestors, and to all the people of the land. Righteousness is on your side, O Lord, but open shame. As at this day falls on us, the people of Judah, the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and all Israel those who are near and those who are far away, in all the lands to which you have driven them, because of the treachery that they have committed against you. Open shame, O Lord, falls on us, our kings, our officials, and our ancestors, because we have sinned against you. To the Lord our God belong mercy and forgiveness, for we have rebelled against him and have not obeyed the voice of the Lord our God, by following his laws, which he set before us by his servants, the prophets. All Israel has transgressed your law and turned aside, refusing to obey your voice. So the curse and the oath written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, has been poured out upon us because we have sinned against you. He has confirmed his words which he spoke against us and against our rulers by bringing upon us a calamity so great that what has been done against Jerusalem has never before been done under the whole heaven. Just as it is written in the law of Moses, all this calamity has come upon us. We did not entreat the favor of the Lord our God, turning from our iniquities and reflecting on his fidelity. So the Lord kept watch over this calamity until he brought it upon us. Indeed, the Lord our God is right in all that he has done, for we have disobeyed his voice. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We read now in unison the third song of Isaiah, from Isaiah chapter 60. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has dawned upon you. For behold, darkness covers the land, deep gloom enshrouds the peoples. But over you the Lord will rise, and his glory will appear upon you. Nations will stream to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawning. Your gates will always be open. By day or night they will never be shut. They will call you the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Violence will no more be heard in your land, ruin or destruction within your borders. You will call your walls salvation and all your portals praise. The sun will no more be your light by day. By night, you will not need the brightness of the moon. 
the Lord will be your everlasting light and your God will be your glory. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. So our second lesson this evening comes from 1 John chapter 1, verses 3 through 10. We declare to you what we have seen and heard, so that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you that God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his Son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Just on a personal note, I wanted to share with you this Psalm 25 is right up there on one of my favorite psalm lists. And I think it's perhaps one of my favorites because much like Psalm 139, it is one of those very personal psalms. Psalm 25 is certainly one of those psalms that the person who spoke it is fully aware of their brokenness. And uh, also in that awareness of brokenness is then made aware of the need for the Lord's deep grace. This psalm is so intimate and, and personal, and I ask you to, to reread it this evening. This voice, this first person singular addressing God, and, and woven through this psalm are these wonderful statements, these themes, this total surrender to God's will. And also three imperatives that are being addressed to God. The second, the first imperative, do not let me be put to shame. The second, show, teach, and lead me in your paths. What, what a beautiful prayer that is. And third, and remember yourself and your character, and do not forget me and mine. So the psalmist uh, surrender tonight, which it truly is a psalm of surrender, is rendered really most beautifully in this very opening first line. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. Think of that beautiful prayer again this evening. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. That might be one of those Bible verses that you and I would definitely want to have memorized. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. As we share that over and over again, it is allowing us to be vulnerable to that need, that touching, profound sense of, of being vulnerable to someone that is far greater and more powerful than I. This theme of surrender happens throughout a good part of the psalm as repeated in verse 2. I put my trust in you. And again, as you follow through in verse 5, notice, in you I have trusted all the day long. The very first imperative, and please note that they are imperatives. These are not gentle requests, but there is an, an exclamation point at the end. Please make these things happen. The very first one, let me not be put to shame, sets the tones for verses 2 through 3 and reveals this sliver of human fear and doubt that restrains perhaps the psalmist trust, which all of us have been through, a people of faith. We still have those moments when we begin to doubt that these promises are true. But then we have this testimony of one who is strong in faith that says, Yes, you are God. Yes, I trust you. 
I am sure as I can be that your ways are right. And yet then comes, but please, please don't disappoint me. Please let me be right about you. And here, I think, is when the psalmist tonight comes face to face with all that is stake when you and I surrender ourselves completely in faith, even when that surrender is to the God who extends so much gracious mercy. The shadow side of trust is the yearning for that trust to be vindicated. The wonderful paradox is that the imperative that issues from that sliver of doubt is addressed to the one that we've already empowered with trust. The second imperative tonight in Psalm 25 says, show me your ways and teach me your paths, plays on this metaphor of the journey of life, the journey that all of us have been on and continue in faith. The third imperative dominates uh, verses 7 through 9, calling on God to remember God's character and to remember the character of being compassionate and loving and grace-filled, to call on God to remember those key characteristics of who God is and to not remember that the psalmist character, which is one of being sinful. So even as Christians who embrace confession and we begin a new day with the sign of the cross, tonight I find this psalmist's prayer daring and, and fresh and hopeful. Our lived experiences is being daunted by the past, those stupid, sinful choices that we have all made tonight, but we are fortunate to have this prayer of asking God not to remember those foolish ways, but to remember God's goodness and grace-filled mercy. And so this tonight, my friends, as we are in the season of Lent, which began, of course, on Ash Wednesday and this upcoming uh, first Sunday in Lent, is a good psalm for us to begin, that personal psalm, that honest psalm, the psalm of grace, the psalm of confession, and the psalm that we so graciously receive, this gospel tonight. Amen. We're going to return again tonight to our beautiful song of Mary. And this perhaps is one of those prayers now that we have somewhat memorized. So let us continue to affirm this uh, Magnificat uh, by sharing the words of Mary. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this generation, from this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm he has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. 
Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us by your Holy Spirit. As we prepare for this uh, first Sunday in Lent, our prayer of the day affirms the gospel lesson from Mark this upcoming Sunday. Almighty God, whose blessed Son was led by the Spirit to be tempted by Satan, come quickly to help us who are assaulted by many temptations. And as you know the weakness of each of us, let each one find you mighty to save. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord Jesus, stay with us, for evening is at hand and the day is past. Be our companion in the way, kindle our hearts and awaken hope, that we may know you as you are revealed in Scripture in the breaking of the bread. Grant this for the sake of your love. Amen. We now offer our own intercessions, those words of gratitude and those words of need. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, our preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies, that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.